Hey everybody, we just launched a brand new Screw Attack t-shirt on the Rooster Teeth store. Just click the link in the description below if you want to pick one up, and it's a great way to support the channel. 2017 was honestly an amazing year for gaming. Classics came back, new classics were made, and we even got a new Nintendo console. It seemed like every month there was some must-have game coming out, which means that this top 10 is definitely gonna break some hearts. But hey, I'm Nervous Nick for Screw Attack's Top 10 Games of 2017. Number 10. 2017 has me saying stuff I never thought I'd say. Scary stuff like, the internet we know it is in crisis. Random stuff like, Ninja Turtles are an injustice too? Or even, Ubisoft made a game starring Rabbids and I like it? That's not supposed to happen, right? Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle is like XCOM but with a more kid-friendly aesthetic. And instead of shooting aliens, you're blasting bunnies. Or rabbits. In dresses. The story is mostly nonsense, but the game here is all about pulling off huge, satisfying combos in a tactical, strategy kind of way. It's so bizarre that this game exists at all, but even more so how entertaining it was for the whole 30 hours or so it took to beat it. Even the DLC has been good. Yeah, I know, none of this makes any sense. Number nine. Square Enix's epic partnership with Platinum Games to develop a fresh installment in the Nier franchise has led to, like, the tastiest of JRPG fruits. Platinum is famous for making incredible action games, and Nier Automata is now the latest to be added to that library. Look, this game is incredibly good. It's an open-world action game where you chop up some bots, but also get into some deep existential philosophy. You know, if you're into that sort of thing. And the music! OMG! The music. Yo, editor, play just a little bit of that song, like enough that they get a good idea of it, but not enough that we get copyright strikes or whatever. Okay, now put it back on the royalty-free stuff. But do you see what I'm talking about, right? The music's good. Platinum is famous for making incredible action games, and Nier Automata is now the latest to be added to that library. If fast-paced melee combat with one of the most memorable stories in gaming this year sounds like it's up your alley, don't skip out on this one. Number 8 They say that graphics don't make the game, but man oh man, they sure can peek the crap out of your interest. There has never been a game that looks quite like Cuphead. I love old school animation, so as soon as I saw this game in motion for the first time, it shot way up my list of must-play games. Lucky for me, the game behind the one-of-a-kind visuals was worth the long wait. At its core, it's pretty straightforward. You run, you die, you shoot, you die, you fight bosses, you parry pink stuff, you die, you die, 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 die scream, die, 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 die! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, Cuphead is challenging, to say the least. But as long as you don't buy it expecting to just breeze through and soak in the visuals, and if you like classic shoot-em-ups, Cuphead is absolutely for you. Number 7 So, calling a game Dark Souls has basically been a meme all year. But Neo is totally like the samurai version of Dark Souls. Team Ninja brought us an interesting, heartfelt story set in 1600s Japan. Every enemy from the lowest undead soldier to the biggest oni feels authentic to Japanese Shinto lore. And of course, it would not be compared to Dark Souls in the first place without being super difficult, yet rewarding and satisfying. In a world where that kind of game has really taken off, Neo still makes sure to check all the boxes to please the fans while making sure to go above and beyond. Number 6 It's been a long time in the making, but Arcane's Prey was definitely worth the wait. Stranded on the space station Talos-1, you're a scientist who's recently discovered a race of extraterrestrials called the Typhon. And of course, they're the scariest freaking things imaginable! The Typhon can shapeshift into objects in the environment, so when you walk into a room and see a cup of coffee, you actually might be looking at a nightmare murder monster. For every step you make toward becoming more powerful, you lose a bit more of your humanity in the process. Prey turned out to be one of 2017's best horror experiences, and thanks to this game, I will never again trust Glass Windows. Number 5 Guerrilla Games was long overdue for another win. If Horizon Zero freaking Dawn is number 5, you know that from here on out this list is almost completely neck and neck. This was THE game that pushed me over the edge to finally get a PS4 almost as soon as it was revealed at E3. The world in Horizon is unlike any other, it's loaded with quests and new places to explore, 
and every machine you encounter is like its own self-contained boss battle. When you encounter a T-Rex in the open world, you think about the best way to bring this thing down. The way you tackle fights is usually only limited by how much of a boss you want to be. Do you want to tether that bad boy to the floor and shoot his cannons off or whatever in slow motion? That's your choice to make. Only reason I ever stopped playing Horizon was because 2017 was the year of amazing games coming out like machine gun fire. But I'm so happy to say that getting a PS4 was worth it just for Horizon Zero Dawn alone. Number 4 Okay, here we go, JRPG fans! Speaking of games that took a million years to come out and were totally worth it, Persona 5 was another success story this year. It's by no means perfect, or even that much of a departure from the Persona formula, but hey, it's kinda tough to fix something that ain't broke. Persona 5 has a spiffy, high-contrast art style that redefines what a UI can look like. Even if you haven't played the game, you've probably seen the memes. If you love yourself some JRPGs, Persona 5 will easily give you 100 plus hours of turn-based goodness with multiple endings and all the high school anime drama you could ever hope for. Like fighting evil gods! That was my favorite part of 10th grade. Number 3 If you know anything at all about the games that I like, you know that I am a massive Banjo-Kazooie fan. Now, I appreciate all the hard work that Ukulele did to try recapturing the old school rare vibe and all, but it still left me with a 3D platforming itch. An itch that was finally scratched by Super Mario Odyssey. This was a game that had a death grip on my attention ever since we first saw the hat mechanic. Using it to possess stuff is fun and all, but being able to bounce off of the hat completely changes how you do your platforming thing. It opens up so much room for creativity. Odyssey takes after Super Mario 64 and Galaxy in the very best ways possible, with tight controls, tons of objectives, and killer music. And just for kicks, you can strip Mario down to his boxers. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that Mario Odyssey has one of the most memorable gaming moments of 2017. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not gonna ruin it for you, but I will say that I knew that New Donk City was gonna be my favorite world. Super Mario Odyssey is platforming heaven and hands down some of the most fun we've had all year. I can only think of two games that give it a run for its money. Number 2 A few years ago, the fad was Horde Mode. Nowadays, it's Battle Royale mode thanks mostly to one game. Are Battle Royale games getting kinda old? Maybe to some. But still, no game this year took the world by storm like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Technically, yes, PUBG is still in early access and isn't officially released. But you take a look at the top games being played on Twitch at any given moment and tell me with a straight face that this game doesn't deserve the recognition. For those of you who haven't given it a shot yet, it's basically the Hunger Games. A hundred or so players drop into the island with a shrinking safety area and the last man standing wins. You can track down weapons on the battlefield and even team up with friends. If it sounds incredibly addictive, that's uh, <laughs> it's cause it is. It's true that games like H1Z1 did this formula first, but PUBG is undisputably the one that made the biggest shockwaves in the gaming industry. Like I said, this top 10 is super close, with no one game being obviously better than the last. But if there is a game that could possibly top PUBG, it's got to be... It's number one. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is like a unicorn in the Nintendo family of games. It's beautiful, it's jaw-dropping, it's jam-packed with surprises at every turn, and in spite of the tough competition, it's our number one game of 2017. This is a contender for so many potential bests besides just Game of the Year. Best Zelda, Best RPG, Best Open World? It's the most time I've sunk into a single-player game since Skyrim, and the most fun I've had getting lost in a world in years. And that's probably the best thing you can ever say about a Zelda game. I wanted to explore every single corner of Hyrule because I knew that a reward of some kind was going to be waiting for me there. And taking it on the go with a Switch version? It's over! It's done! I will be playing this game forever! Breath of the Wild was more than just the shakeup that the Zelda series needed for so long. It is quite arguably the single best game to come out in 2017. For our secret number 11, we gotta give major props to an incredibly well done remake, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Yes, it's super challenging, but it always feels great to go back to a classic game with a coat of paint that looks this good. Hopefully in 2018, we'll see Spyro get the same treatment. 